Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing about the last problem of today's weekly contest, Count Beautiful Substrings 2. The problem is very very interesting and because of the loose constraints of the problem, there are multiple different solutions to this problem. I at least have seen four different solutions while browsing through the submission list. In this particular video, we'll be discussing two solutions. One, which is a small extension of the brute force solution itself and second, which is an actual optimization of brute force solution which works in order and time. If you stay till the end, I am very sure you will be learning something new from the video. With that, let's get started. The problem states that you are given a string s and a positive integer k. You let vowels and consonants be the number of vowels and the consonants in the string. And a string is beautiful if number of vowels is equal to number of consonants and number of vowels multiplied by number of consonants modulus k is equals to 0. We have to return the number of non-empty beautiful substrings. So let's say our string is b a e y h and k is 2. So we have to return all the substrings of this string which is beautiful. So one possible substring which is beautiful is b a e y. In this string you can see number of vowels is 2 which is a and e. Number of consonants is also 2 which is b and y. And number of vowels multiplied by number of consonants is 4 which is divisible by 2. So this particular string is a beautiful beautiful substring. Similarly a e y h is also beautiful. Number of vowels and number of consonants are equal which is 2. And uh, if you do 2 cross 2 modulus 2 that is also 0. So they, there are two different substring which are beautiful and hence the answer here is 2. So hope the problem statement is clear. Now how to solve this? As always, let's start with the simplified version wherein we only have this constraint vowels is equal to consonants, nothing else. So if you know how to solve this, feel free to jump to the next section of the video. We have to figure out number of substring such that in the substring there are equal number of vowels and consonants. So what you can do, you can simply replace the vowels with plus one, consonants with minus one and because the substring has equal number of vowels and consonants, you will simply say the sum of the subarray should be equals to zero, right? And you can simply transform the problem into a subarray sum problem, which I think uh, you might already know about. So we just simply replace all the vowels a e i o u with plus one and all other letters with minus one. Now once we have this, we just have to figure out how many subarrays are there which have the sum zero. So if you start with the subarray, so you will one brute force solution should be you will try out all possible subarray L and R. So for each L, you will try out all possible R, figure out the sum, see if the sum is zero. If it is zero, you will increment your result, otherwise not. So in this particular case, the complexity would be order n square, right? But we have to optimize this because n is very huge, which will not fit the given time constraint. So whenever subarray sum is involved, the first thing you should think about is prefix sum. So let's just create a prefix sum. Prefix sum is nothing but uh, the sum of the prefixes. So prefix sum of 2 would be the sum in this particular range. Similarly prefix sum at 5 would be the sum in this particular range. right? So this is the prefix sum array that we have. Now what is the subarray sum given the prefix sum array? So subarray sum would be prefix of r minus prefix of l minus 1. This is the subarray sum for the for the subarray l to r. Right? Now we have to figure out that the subarrays for which this is equals to 0. Right? Now we have l and r. We know already we already know one solution which is uh, try out all the possible subarrays 
and see which one is giving you as 0. So see which of these subtraction is giving you as 0. So unless you have both L and R in opposite side of the equation, no matter what you do, you actually have to iterate over all possible L and R because you to evaluate this, you need both L and R. So there is no other choice. You have to iterate over both L and R. So one simple thing you can do is you can rearrange the equation and make it something like uh, this, right? So this entire thing is PR is equals to P of L minus one. Now you have R in one side of the equation and you have L in other side of the equation. So which means one side of equation you can evaluate without depending on the other index. That's the most important trick. So now you know that uh, prefix of R, let's say you are at particular index R. So you already know the value of prefix of R, which is plus one, uh, which is minus two. Prefix of R is minus two. Now you want a subarray such that the sum is zero. So all the subarrays that have some zero should have equal prefix of L minus one. So you know there is just one such prefix where the value is equal. So number of subarray that ends at this particular index and has subarray sum zero will be equals to one, right? Similarly, if you look at uh, this this particular R, in this case the prefix sum is zero. So prefix of R is zero. You know all you want to find out all possible else which is equals to zero. So you already know that there are three such L's, one which is before this. So all of these three L's will form a valid subarray with some zero, right? So the problem now boils down to you figure out the prefix sum for each index. Just make sure to have the total number of such values you have seen before and add that to, our, to your result, right? So the pseudocode would look something like this. Uh, very simple. We will simply prepare our array and the prefix sum array, right? After that, we will iterate over all the indexes one by one from left to right. For each index, we know that if this is the ending index or this is the R of the subarray, the L of the subarray would be the indexes which have the same value as prefix of R. So you will simply figure out how many such indexes exist and add it to your result. And finally, you increment the count of such subarray by one because you have seen, you have just at this particular index itself, you have seen one such uh, prefix of I which have this particular value. So after this, you result will contain the number of subarray which have the sum zero. In other words, number of sub substrings which have vowels is equals to consonants. So, if you are unclear about this, I would strongly encourage you to rewind and try to understand this part completely because the rest of the part will be dependent on this very much. So, the actual problem was vowels is equals to consonants and vowels cross consonants modulo k is equals to zero. Now because vowels is equals to consonants already, we can replace vowels cross consonants with vowels cross vowels modulus k is equals to zero, right? Now we'll do the same thing, right? For vowels cross consonants, uh, vowels equals to consonants, we simply say prefix of r is equals to prefix of l minus one, right? And that's how we are able to separate out L and R and because we have separated out L and R we know that we don't need both L and R to compute anything. Uh, so because they are separated completely we iterated over one of them and figured out the value for the other one. Right? If we have to somehow figure out uh, if we somehow have to incorporate this condition as well, we have to do the exact same thing. We have to come up with a equation which 
in which we have r in one place and l in the other place so that when you are iterating over one of the indexes either l or r you know what is the value of the other one right so if you think about it the number of vowels would be equals to length of the subarray divided by 2 right so let's say you know that this is a good subarray why because uh, prefix of r is equals to prefix of l minus 1 right so this is a good subarray so the length of this subarray is 6 and because it is a good subarray we know that number of vowels and number of consonants will be equal it means they both are 3 and 3 so there will be 3 vowels and there will be 3 consonants so if the length is l l by 2 number of vowels will be there and l by 2 number of consonants will be there so if you sim you have to simply make sure that l square by 4 modulus k should be equals to 0 that's the condition you have to satisfy now as we have discussed the value of length l is j minus i just to uh, make sure that we don't confuse between this l and this r i replace let's replace this l with i and let's, let's replace this uh, r with j right so we know that j minus i square divided by 4 let's forget about uh, divide by 2 or divide by 4 for now j minus i whole square should modulus k should be equals to 0 if you expand this j square plus i square minus 2 ij modulus k is equals to 0 now look at this equation no matter what you do you will not be able to separate i and j in other words you can't have an equation or an inequality where you have only i on the right side and only j on the right uh, on the on the other side so because you don't have this or uh, you can't make a uh, inequality from this no matter what you do with this equation you have to iterate over both i and j to solve it right so with this equation even though you are able to find number of vowels equation number of consonants substring efficiently you have to iterate over all the subarray to actually figure out which of those subarray have this condition satisfied right but and that will take order n square right so if you let's say uh, you are at index i this is i uh, or this is j right now for this j you already know which all i's are valid so for this j you know that uh, all the i which have the value minus 3 will be valid so in this case there is no such i so no such i, no such I is valid for this particular j you know all the i which have the value minus 1 will be valid so there are three such i's four two uh sorry there are two such i four and two so this is you have to not like to understand whether which of these satisfy this criteria now you have to iterate over both the i's and because you are iterating over both the i's the worst case complexity is still order n square for a single j you might be iterating over all the uh all the indexes again or n by 2 indexes in worst case again so overall complexity is still order n square just because we are not able to separate j and i from this particular criteria so from here onwards there are two approaches either you do some trick and optimize this order n square algorithm itself uh, like use this n square algorithm with some optimization so that uh, you skip the cases wisely and second approach is actually do some trick to separate out j and i from this particular equation right the first one is bit hacky uh, we will discuss it at the end 
for now let's just try to skip uh, let's just try to follow the uh, try to find out whether we can have j and i separated from this particular equation so our goal is now to figure out a equation such that we are able to say that l square by 4 modulus k is equal to 0 with i in one side j in other side right so what is k k is some uh, k is some number which can be represented as the product of prime factors so p1 is prime p2 is prime p3 is prime and so on so p1 power k1 p2 power k2 p3 power k3 and so on and so forth this is what k is now what is l l can also be represented in the similar fashion p1 power l1 p2 power l2 and so on and so forth now what we want we want l square by 4 to be divisible by k now if l square by 4 is divisible by k it means this part should be completely divisible by k if we do l square by 4 so let's forget about 4 for a moment we'll come to 4 afterwards but uh, for now we can say that 2 l1 like if you do l square this will come at everything will be multiplied by 2 right so 2 l1 should be greater than equals to k1 that's the criteria that needs to be satisfied for l square to be divisible by k otherwise l square can't be divisible by k and that criteria should be satisfied for all the ki and all the allies right so in general we can write this as 2 li should be greater than equals to ki right now the same thing you can replace it with li should be greater than equals to ki by 2 with the ceiling of uh, this division why ceiling because think about it you have let's say uh, 2 power 3 in k right like let's say p1 is 2 so you have 2 power 3 in k now you have an l with 2 power 1 now even if you multiply this l with another l with 2 power 1 this will not be able to divide this this will be able to divide only when the number of two increases or they are equal now because this is l and this is l number of two here will always be same like number of two in this particular l and number of two in this particular expression will be equal because they both are same so you have to like to make sure that this is actually greater you have to make sure that each of them is actually greater than the ceiling of this by 2 because if it is less than ceiling of this by 2 then you know that because they are equal they both combined will not be able to make this 3 right so that's where each of these li in this particular case will should be at least 2 which is 3 by 2 of uh, ceiling of 3 by 2 so this is the criteria that needs to be satisfied for all the l and k uh, all the allies and ki's for l square to be divisible by k right now you have actually removed l square to you have boils down l square to just l now in other words what we are saying is if there is a new k such that let's say there is a k dash which is uh, p1 power k dash p2 to the power k dash p3 to the power k dash and p4 power k4 dash now k1 dash is actually equals to uh, k1 by 2 ceiling k2 dash is equals to k2 by 2 ceiling so if you prepare a new k dash you can simply ensure that L is divisible by K 
and you don't need to worry about L square because L square will be divisible by K as well. Just to reiterate, previously we don't have a relation here just because we have to like first of all uh, just to make it a bit more clear we have to remove the square from here that's what our goal is because if you have square here you will have 2ij which you can't separate so if you have to remove the square that's where we are trying to find out what we can do to remove it so we saw that if we convert this k to a k dash where k dash uh, where each ki dash is equals to ki by 2 ceiling then we just need to make sure that l is divisible by k dash we don't need to worry about l square because if this is true l square will always be true and if it if it is not true then also l square will never be divisible by k dash because both the criteria is satisfied we can now say that if we just make if we just make sure that l is divisible by k dash we are good so in other words we are able to remove l square from here and as a result we will be able to separate j and i as well that's the entire crux so let's just uh, look at it one final time with a small example so let's say let's say k is uh, 2 power 3 multiplied by 3 power 3 right and we have some l we need to make sure that l square is divisible by k that's that's our goal now to make sure that l square is divisible by k we have to do something but now we have wanted we wanted a new k such that if we made sure that l is divisible by this k dash then l square will be divisible by this k, k as well now this k dash we figured out that it should be 2 power 3 by 2 ceiling which is 2 multiplied by 3 power 3 by 2 ceiling which is again 2 so in other words instead of making sure this l square is divisible by k you can make sure that this l is divisible by 4 into 10 36 if l is divisible by 36 you are sure that l square will be divisible by k as well right so you can simply convert your k to k dash by this particular formula now notice that we have skipped 4 in uh, in the very beginning so if you think about it you have to make sure that l by 2 square is divisible right so whenever the first prime is 2 right so you have to make sure that this is divisible l1 minus 1 is divisible by k uh, this k1 so l1 minus 1 into 2 should be greater than equals to k1 and if you just uh, do the same math again you will see l1 should be greater than equals to k1 by 2 uh, ceiling plus 1 so that's why we have a special criteria for the case where p is equal to 2 so the approach is convert this k into k dash with this formula and now we will be able to just check whether the number is divisible by l or not and we are done so just to make it a bit more clear let's walk through an example this is the exact same array this is the prefix sum now along with prefix sum we need to also make sure that l is divisible l modulus k dash is equals to 0 right in other words j minus i modulus k is e uh, modulus k dash is equals to 0 and as we have um, discussed this multiple times we have to separate j and i to make sure that we don't need both of them right so we can simply separate it by saying j modulus k dash is equals to i modulus k dash and because we are able to separate these two again we know if we are iterating over one of them we will be able to find other one by default 
and hence we don't need to iterate over both of them right so the new criteria is for each j figure out prefix of j uh, like for each j all the i's for which prefix of j is equal to prefix of i are valid and also j modulus k dash should be equals to i modulus k dash so we have to simultaneously satisfy both the condition so in this particular example k is 432 so you have to figure out k dash as we discussed k dash is simply 2 power the ceiling of k by 2 which is 2 here but for prime 2 we have a special criteria we have to add 1 as well multiplied by 3 power ceiling of k by 2 which is 2 again we don't need to add 1 because add 1 was only there for 2 so the value of k is now 72 uh, sorry value of k is now 72 so you just simply maintain the value of i modulus k dash as well so along with uh, prefix you also maintain i modulus k dash so in this particular case because k is 72 all of these are this now while checking the cases let's say you have you are at this particular j so you have to now check with which of the pair has 0 comma 9 before previously you were just checking 0 but now you will check which of the pair has 0 comma 9 and based on that you will increment your result that's the only change the overall complexity is still order n because converting this k to k dash is very simple you can uh, do sieve and figure out the prime factors and uh, then convert k to k dash by simple formula so hope this entire solution makes sense let's look at the code for this and then we will be looking at another solution which is a slight optimization of the brute force solution itself so this is the solution which uh, we have been talking about we just converted this k to k dash by that simple trick we have uh, extra cases as we have extra case as well for j equals to 2 now once you have converted k to k dash the rest is simple you have to simply keep maintaining the prefix sum and j modulus k or i modulus k whatever you say it i modulus k dash so currently the sum is 0 and modulus is also 0 because uh, the index is also 0 so you will simply do cnt of sum comma 0 plus plus now after that for each index you will simply calculate the sum after calculating the sum you will simply check which one or which of the indexes are valid i for this particular j and which all will be the valid indexes which have the same sum and which have the same j modulus k dash so once you have figured out that you will simply add it to the result and finally you will increment the value of count as well so overall this will work in just order and time uh, you can replace this map with another map and everything will still work now let's look at another solution which is just a slight variation of the brute force solution itself so just to recap the brute force solution was we will for we already know vowels is equal to consonants that we already know how to figure out right but because of the second criteria and we are not able to separate this j and i from this equation we have to iterate over all the i for a particular j that's what our brute force solution was so in other words we will we already know this is my original array this is my prefix sum for each j we already know which all i's are valid so for all the we have separated all the ones so plus ones are here we have separated all the zeros zeros are here so zero is at one at three and at nine similarly we have separated minus one minus one is at two uh four and eight and similarly we have separated minus two and minus three right now the brute force solution is do l comma r thing in each of these array independently so sim simply 
go over all the R for a particular L and figure out how many of them satisfy R minus L square modulus K equals to zero. Right? So let's just uh, take a small example. Let's say K is two. So in this case, you will first do this R minus L, which is uh, two. 2 modulus 2 is 0. Uh, sorry, 2 square, uh, 2 by 1 is the number of vowel. So, sorry, 2 by 2 is the number of vowels. So, 1, 1 cross 1 is the value of vowels into consonants. So, it is coming as 1. So, 1 modulus 2 should be equal to 0, which is not the case. So, for this L, this R is not valid. So, let's try out the next R. 9 minus 1, which is 8. 8 by 2 is the count of vowels and consonants which is 4 4 cross 4 is 16 16 modulus 2 is 0 so hence for this L this R is a valid R right so that's how we the brute force solution will proceed now this is this has order in square time why because this array can be of the length n by 2 in worst case right that's why the complexity is order n square what if we reduce this array length to k itself? So notice we need to figure out the value such that r minus l multiplied by r minus l modulus k is 0. This can be translated to r modulus k minus l modulus k multiplied by the same thing modulus k is equal to 0 right these two are the exact same thing because of modulus property so because they are they are same you can simply say convert each of these with modulus k so convert this entire array into an array of size k where each of them is a modulus each of them is a modulus of k so in this particular example k is 2 so the modulus of k can be either 0 or can be 1 now instead of having instead of having this many l and r we know that in the worst case we will have this k number of l and r in total so 1 modulus 2 is 1 3 modulus 2 is again sorry 1 modulus 2 is 1 so we will increment this 3 modulus 2 is again 1 so we will increment this 9 modulus 2 is again 1 so we will increment this so in total we have three ones here and this is the array instead and we will do an n squared thing over this array basically l and r thing over this array instead of uh, iterating over all the sub arrays of this array right if we do this the worst case complexity now boils down to order k square instead of order n square because previously the length of this array was order uh, of n by 2 right but now we have reduced the length to just order k by a simple trick right so in total what we have is we are doing k square thing for each of these independent arrays so k square multiplied by number of such independent arrays now how many such independent arrays can be there in worst case number of such independent arrays can be n think about the case where everything is plus one in that case prefix sum will never match every prefix sum will be unique so we have n independent arrays and if we do this k square thing for n independent arrays this will still not pass right so we have reduced the complexity of larger arrays but we have increased the complexity of the smaller arrays previously the smaller arrays just worked in order one square but now they also took they also will take order k square so we have reduced the frequency uh, complexity of larger increased that of smaller so why not take the best of both worlds and that's exactly what meet in the middle is you know how to reduce the complexity of larger ones and for smaller ones you don't need to reduce you can simply use the good old n squared thing over the smaller arrays so what you will do 
for all the let's just uh, get rid of uh, these things so for all the arrays which have the size greater than 1000 or greater than k you will simply do k square thing because if array size is greater than k k square will be beneficial right and for all the array size which is less than k you will go ahead and do your good old n square thing now if you do this the overall complexity will still uh, will reduce to order k square into some constant why how many such sub array can be there uh, how many such component can be there size is greater than n uh, size is greater than k so number of such uh, component is n by 2k right which if you look at uh, the constraint which is 5 into 10 power 4 divided by 2000 right which is uh, roughly around uh, 25 right so 20, only 25 such sub array can be there and how many such sub array can be there of uh, size n less than k it is of the order root n right and if you uh, look at this the value is less than k so the complexity is still not uh, like this n square is not actually n square it uh, is very small so this n square into root n will give will pass or in other words if you replace this n square with uh, k square for the largest array this will still work so just try to evaluate the number of sub arrays uh, number of sub arrays of each kind and you will figure out it is uh, overall it is very less and that's because that's because this entire thing will pass the given time constant so the approach is just the extension of the brute force solution itself what we are doing extra is we have reduced the complexity of larger arrays and we keep doing the same thing for smaller arrays so the code for that would look something like this we have found out the prefix sum now after prefix sum we group all of them because we have to do something for each of these groups right so we group all of them in this another map after grouping we iterated over each one of them we figure out if their length is less than 1000 if it is less than 1000 we will do the good old n squared thing we will iterate over each of them figure out number of vowels see if number of vowels square modulus k is equal to 0 if it is greater than 1000 then we will convert everything to mod k right and after converting everything to mod, everything to mod k we will do k square uh, we will do n square thing over this mod k array which is still k square so that's how we boils which smartly boils down the time complexity from k square into n to k square into some c where c is very small so hope you understand both the solution if you have any doubts in any other solution feel free to post them in the comment section below i would be happy to answer if you like the video give a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you in the next one thank you